All right, so thank you all for coming. My name is Nicolette, and I'm going to talk to you about fantastic bees and where to find them. Uh, before I start talking about bees, I do want to clear up one misconception about bees. They are not terrifying and scary. They're, uh, they're not death bees, as some would like to call them. They won't go out of their way to sting you. All they want to do is forage and find nectar and pollen, and they will stay away from you if you stay away from them. Um, I actually find them really adorable, kind of cute. Um, so you might, you might think differently, but. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, bees, when I say the word bees, most of you are probably thinking of honeybees, which is completely understandable. They're the most well-known, most popular kind of bee that you'll see around, and that's because we eat the honey that they produce, um, and they're also really important for agriculture. Uh, they pollinate in some way or another about 30% of the food that we eat. So honeybees are transported all over the country uh, to pollinate kind of one crop after another. However, honeybees are not native to the United States. Uh, they are pollinators of majority, uh, or they pollinate a lot of these agricultural crops, but they were not originally here. There were native pollinators that were doing that job long before they arrived. Um, honeybees were introduced to the United States by Europeans in about the 1600s when they arrived uh, on the continent. So these native bees, uh, they are undergoing some of the same, similar problems to what honeybees are, these declines. Um, we've seen a few issues with honeybees in our local area, especially um, a few, uh, last year was when that giant semi-truck full of bees tipped over. So there's a lot of issues going on that we hear about with bees. Um, I don't really want to dwell on those issues, but I do want to introduce you to some kinds of native bees that we have in this area, in the Northwest. Um, there's some pretty good puns that we got out of this bee spill as well. <laughs> um, so a lot of these native bees that we have in the Northwest are doing this job of pollination and we don't really see it. So the first kind of native bee that you'll probably recognize are bumblebees. Uh, I think bumblebees are really awesome. They are in a, they, they form a colony similar to what honeybees do, a lot smaller. Uh, the difference is though that bumblebees will send off queens at the end of the summer to go eat and forage on nectar and those queens actually hibernate over the winter. They go into something called diapause where their, their body metabolism slows down and then they come out again in the spring, lay a bunch of eggs and establish new colonies. Um, bumblebees are also really awesome because they perform a special service called buzz pollination. <laughs> Uh, buzz pollination is really unique. What the bee does will grab onto the anther of the flower, which is the part that holds the pollen, and vibrate really, really quickly at a really high frequency to knock the pollen loose. Uh, so it's almost like a tuning fork. If you were to hit a tuning fork and watch how quickly it vibrates, that's how quickly a bumblebee will vibrate its muscles to do this buzz pollination. Um, another kind of native bee that we have in the area that's really important to us, um, particularly in Washington for our economy, are uh, mason bees, and that's because apples are very important in Washington. Um, I love apples, I love eating them, I'm sure a lot of you do too, and for our economy, especially over uh, around Wenatchee area, that's a hugely important crop. And apples are pollinated by blue orchard bees, which is a kind of mason bee. Um, you can see they look really different from any other kind of bee that you would normally imagine. And they're also solitary. They don't form colonies or hives like honeybees and bumblebees do. They forage on their own and lay their own eggs and raise their own larvae individually. Um, another kind of native bee, this large family, are the Helictidae, or the sweat bees. Um, and this is an example of a sweat bee, this green metallic bee, really pretty, another solitary bee. And the sweat bee family gets their name because they actually are attracted to the taste of human sweat. So if they land on you, they will treat you kind of like a salt lick. Um, <laughs> they're so small that you can't feel it. It's not like a giant bumblebee or honeybee landing on you. They're very, very tiny. Um, and so. It's, a, it's not really intimidating, but it's kind of fun. They like to come and lick uh, on your skin. So a lot of the questions that come to me when I'm talking ab about bees with people are what can we do to help bees? Because we all see how there are all these problems that bees are dealing with. And so if you're a gardener, then you're probably already doing a lot to help bees just by planting flowers, providing nectar and pollen. Uh, the number one rule I'd say is uh, to plant a variety of colors. So different bees have different preferences of flowers. If you were eating the same food every day, you'd get really bored of it. Same with bees. So planting a variety of colored flowers ensures that you have a variety of food sources for them. Also think about the flower shape. You have really, really tiny solitary bees. You have pretty big bumblebees. Certain bee sizes can't fit into really tiny tubular flowers. So also having a variety of flower shapes is a really helpful trick. 
Uh, so if you're interested in helping out bees and want to know more information, I would recommend the Xerxes Society. They have a ton of resources. Um, you're also free to contact me, and you can come see me in intermission as well if you have any more questions. Thank you so much, and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you.